Today's episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast is brought to you by AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast. Today we're speaking to Steve from Alfresco Chapel, who talks to us all about his barbecue store. And he'll go through that with us shortly. Without much further ado, here's Steve. Hello, Steve. Thank you so much for coming on the Meet and Greet Barbecue podcast for this episode. For anyone who doesn't know who you are, please do introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Steve. I'm from Alfresco Chapel in the Northwest. We're a relatively new uh, barbecue grill shop and we set up last year and we're really passionate about barbecuing the barbecuing community and the barbecuing community up north as they say. So I didn't realise that it's it's that new the 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 barbecue shop so you only launched last year? We only launched last May June we we've had the shop there as a previous shop for 15 years and we wanted to open, well, I've wanted to open personally a barbecue shop there for about three or four years. Uh, and we finally made the jump, made the leap. And June last year, we opened the doors. So we were very new. And so how, how's the first year been? Uh, as you know, as you've probably heard, the first year, the first season was uh, trying. We've opened the shop, we opened the shop. In what appears to be, and what we've now learned, was the, the worst year in barbecue retail, known to the memory of barbecuing people. <laughs> it was, it was, it was hard work, but we're here, and yeah. this year is going to be uh, going to be awesome. It, it's a beautiful, beautiful building as well. Kind of looking at the pictures, and you're stocking some fantastic things. What what sort of products are people being able to find in there with you? <clears throat> we've we've gone for premium products and popular products we've scoured the north of the country in the northwest and we we went to other shops which are all really good really great but we tried to do different lines so we were crossing paths and we we want to do premium lines so you name it from the pk grills to the primo ceramics to traeger to hellraiser you name a premium brand, and we've, we've definitely got it in that shop, and we've got more to come. We've still got more products due in for this season. The, the Hellraisers are a thing of beauty, aren't they? All, all of them. They're so they're, nice. Oh, they're built like tanks. Lifetime <laughs> guarantee and built for the Canadian outdoors and built like tanks. I know our, our, uh, our supplier, uh, he said, you're never, ever going to have a warranty issue. He says, because he's never had anybody come back in the three years or so he's been importing them, but what have you. You never get anything wrong with a Hellraiser. They're made for life. Yeah, I, I, I'm quite, I, quite int- I like the, um, is it the, nom- the Nomadder? The, the kind of one that looks like a fire pit that's got the kind of extendable arm. We actually saw the very last one this week, took a deposit on it. Uh, they're going to be a collector's piece soon because obviously Hellraiser, Unfortunately, hit the rocks a little while ago and they, they no more. So uh, we saw they were last nomada this week. And I did say to the gentleman, who's a local guy from Manchester, uh, well, it's going to uh, be a collector's piece soon. So watch this space. Um, do, you, do you have a, do you have a, I suppose you can't, can you say this? Do you have a favourite brand? <laughs> I can't say, oh, if I say <laughs> that now, my inbox by the morning will be absolutely <laughs> Littered with four letter words. <laughs> <laughs> mine. Is it just that? Mine. It's my brand. <laughs> <laughs> mine. Yeah. I've, I've got to say at the moment, and it does change, it does change regularly, but I've got to say at the moment, my favorite brand, when we don't stock it, but I've got one at home, uh, absolutely love it, is the Somerset Asado Grill at the moment. Wow. Absolutely. I saw, I saw that on your yeah. Instagram. Quite recently, yeah. isn't it? You got it? I got it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've been waiting for a, a month or two for it. I've wanted one for 12 months. And I went down to Somerset and met Ben, the owner, the co- co-owner down there. I travelled down to Somerset to see him especially and to have a look at them. And uh, as soon as I saw them, I'd already made my mind if I was going to get one. Um, fell in love with it, brought it home. 
Um, it's at the moment, like I said, for all the other supplies, at the moment it's my favorite grill. That could change to your grill next week. <laughs> <laughs> that was very diplomatically put. Yeah. A brilliant, beautiful piece of kit. We have asked them, uh, Ben, about possibility to stock them in the shop, but I think they're looking at doing the direct to customer at the moment for the foreseeable. But we'd love to be a northern uh, showroom stockies for them. Anyway, brilliant piece of kit. I can't fault them. So, uh, for, for you then, starting last year, and you know, obviously, we you know, there's uh, a, a number of quite big barbecue shops now in the uk which is obviously a fantastic thing yeah how, how do you decide on when there's so much choice now in terms of brands but also rubs sauces accessories pizza ovens are just booming how do you sit there and go right how can i be different and ha- but also still give customers what they want it must have been quite a quite a process for you on what to stock yes there was there was a couple of brands that we initially looked at, a couple of barbecues I've actually, I've actually got at home and we don't stock that brand. And we did look, thought, right, we'll go, I won't name them, but we'll go down that route for the such a, a line of barbies. Pick me words very carefully. <laughs> and because maybe people in the area or I mean, there's no, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, I won't say competitive, there's another barbecue shop in Bolton, does a brilliant job. But we try to do different lines than he does. And there's obviously the other uh, barbecue shops up uh, a little clither away and what have you. And we try to do different lines that they do, but we wanted to stay with premium brands. So when you get to say your gas barbies, you're going to have top three top brands and you go to your, your charcoal barbies, you're going to have three top brands. So we pick one of the top three of brands that wasn't being done in the area. And I think it works quite well. If somebody wants to go to brand uh, A, they can go, down the road, they want to go to a brand B, they can go up the road. If they want to go to the best brands, they come and see us. Again, like how you've done that. Yeah. <laughs> you they also... all, everyone in, they all stock great, great uh, gear, great brands, not knocking anybody and everybody. I like the barbecue community uh, friendliness. Uh, since we opened last year in June, we've become really great friends and buddies with a lot of the northwest and the north of the country and even up to Scotland. I was away last weekend with uh, Scott Food from Scotland on a mm-hmm. training day, cracking lad, funny guy. So we made a lot of friends with a lot of people in the north of the country and the barbecue community absolutely love it, the way, the way they get on. You also are keeping things fun as well with things like Guess the Grill and stuff on your Instagram. Like, How much goes into like kind of planning and thinking about what you're putting on and how you're showcasing that, but also keeping people engaged? Yes, the grill was one of uh, <clears throat> one of the girls that works with me. Uh, it was her idea, and I let her run it. I kind of picked the grills, but she was the whiz on the social media for me. But unfortunately, <laughs> she went on maternity uh, two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So I'm ashamed to say, for the past two weeks, I've not done guess the grill because I've not had time to do it. Abby, the girl who worked for us, was looking after it for me. But I can't believe how so many people guessed the correct answer every week. It was like, how how did they know these little signs on the grills and little switches we put on? It was too easy. I was going to do, and next time I do it, I'm going to I'm gonna take a picture of my blender in the kitchen on my hoover and put that on to see if anybody guesses that. <laughs> that's the next trick or of the core of my TV in my office and see if somebody thinks that's a barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> if someone gets that right, though, do you have to send it to them? <laughs> Uh, if, if, if I'll send them one of my livers on my kidney if they get that right. <laughs> I suppose it just, it just shows about how much of an avid bunch we are in the old barbecue community. But guess the grill, yeah, we love it. I need to get it rocking again this week. But what I'm thinking about doing is, or maybe even once a month, and do a bit of a bumper prize yeah. instead of doing a bag of pellets or a bag of charcoal or a couple of rubs or a couple of hot honeys. We may do it once a month, hopefully get more interaction and like maybe give away a, a, a couple hundred pound barbecue you know, or something, something a bit of a chunk of a prize maybe. Mm-hmm. Not up to Alton's, bar, not up to Alton's world, uh, world kind of prizes, when it runs into the, the thousands, but for, for our press call chapel, we might stretch to a couple hundred pounds. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think it, everyone would appreciate that, right? So you've got to... 
you've got to start somewhere. Yes, yeah, yeah. And it's early days, and we're happy the way things are going. And I said this this up and coming season, I think there's a general good vibe. Everybody's fought to. Just need this weather to change. If the weather changes, I think it's going to be a good season for everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> are you? Although you know the barbecue community is ever growing, certainly you know in the UK, are you still finding that the core of your business is very much seasonal? Whereas the avid barbecues will do it three six five. Do you notice that the weather does play a big part? Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, e- even with myself barbecuing outside, I mean, I've got piles of barbecues in outside kitchen, and when it's raining like this, like a lot of the guys, you kind of take a step back and think I'll wait till tomorrow if, there, if it's not raining and then it just keeps raining and raining <laughs> but I think there's a lot of die hard barbecues in the community I've had a conversation tonight just before we jumped on air with uh, one of our pals Wood Fired Feaster in Preston and he said the same he's, he's not been barbecuing outside as much uh, through the week as he'd like to do he's just getting that motivation when the weather's a bit bit crappy like it is at the moment but seasonal yes definitely we noticed when we first opened like I said through the summer months all the way up to maybe October the the Instagram was flying and people putting all the kooks on and it's kind of dwindled dwindled off for everybody over the past couple of months as soon as the weather changes we'll be back up and running again Mm -hmm. and are you finding um, uh, you're getting a bigger reach online, I suppose, naturally. But are you? Is your core focus on the showroom actually getting people to come into into that showroom so they can see the grills, they can see you know the displays and feel the weights of the lids and all that kind of stuff that kind of you know makes buying a barbecue such a great thing? Um, is that your kind of main focus, driving people into that that showroom? Exactly. Well, this the online side is secondary to us and it, it has been and that was the plan from day one uh our main focus is to uh get people in the shop to have a look at the barbies get a feel of the barbies and we've we have noticed we've had people traveling to i, I want to come and look at a, a gosney dome i want we have people at weekend who have traveled miles and miles to come and physically see the dome they don't want to just look at it on the computer screen. They want to come and look. And we've had people travelling. Have you got the pro cues? Yes, we have. Have you got them on display? We've got all of them on display. We'll be there in an hour and travelling to come and physically see. Yeah, the online side, even though, yes, we do wish to push it and our website is a working uh, progress and we're just we're struggling to get everything on uh, quickly enough. I've actually put a little job up this out today to get somebody in the shop three mornings a week purely to get things on the website and keep up with it. Mm-hmm. But our main focus is people in the shop. Show them, chat to them, give them advice, uh, give them the options between the pizza ovens, give them the options between the ceramic eggs. Try and give them a little bit of advice. And we think it's working well that way. I think it, I think it definitely is. We get people travelling. Uh distances to come and get their hands on the gear it makes such a difference as well because for example the new traegers it blew my mind how heavy those lids are and Um, just the the, the build quality on them and like just saying oh there's an induction hob on there but actually seeing these things and the size of them in person like the rock boxes i'd seen like a lot of the them like online and they look good online but in person they're almost like art pieces you know and just seeing they these are. things in person makes a huge difference anyone listening who's really into barbecue but hasn't stepped foot into any of these shops it's so important to do and particularly if you've got whole ranges go up and see yourselves right <laughs> the new uh yellow rock box that they released last week week before it's absolutely beautiful. People come in our shop. Uh, we're, pro- we're primarily a, a bottle gas company. Mm-hmm. We always have been for 25 years. A bit like Storcal. Their, their core business is Calagas. Yeah, our mm-hmm. core business is bottle gas. So we get people coming in our showroom every five minutes for bottles of gas. And people come in with a bottle for a bottle of gas and they're like, wow, where's the balloon shop gone that you used to have? <laughs> where's all these barbecues come from and then they see the rock boxes and the domes which is the first thing you see when you're coming through a door 
and they've not even come in for a piece of it and they, they, they migrate to the rock boxes and go, aren't these beautiful? Aren't, look at these, look at these, look at these, Bill, look at these, um, and they come in these little old deers and they're like, look at the colours on these uh, peach shrubbins. And then, and then they turn and see the domes, which are just around the corner, and the mounds drop open. The works of art, the Gosnies are absolute works of art. Mm, I, I love I love the kind of olive green one. And also, is it the signature, the black one as well? It's really, yes. really striking. Really, really striking. I've got, I've got my eyes on them. I'm, I think I'm going to end up with one and with the also the wood fire attachment as well just so i can play between gas and wood with it as well to see what the difference is with the outcomes yes yes uh, the we we had a little change of display a couple of months ago we just had initially one of the rock boxes and one of the domes uh, on display and it looked cool and like i said people would the mouths were dropping open when they came in the shop and they were getting people's attention even like i said just coming in for bits and pieces of bottle gas and then we decided a couple of months ago we'll, we'll put the whole range out so we've got both of the domes on stands and we've got all four of the colour of rock boxes on a lovely uh, piece of prep table that's done by our friends who made them bespoke and the display now it just looks absolutely awesome and you know it's, the, it's probably the best thing we've done regards to peace from us. Mm. It's quite, it's quite amazing, isn't it, at the moment that, uh, you know, brands like Rockbox, Della Vita, um, we interviewed a, a barbecue manufacturer called Charlie Ovens. Yes, that are make it, make it, yeah, making these bold, beautiful colour statement um, barbecues and ovens in comparison, obviously, traditionally, they're right, they're, they're black. You have a black kettle or you have a, you know, a black yeah. drum or whatever it might be. Yeah. But actually, they're, they're more... All, uh, it's definitely becoming more of an art thing right now with with all these big and bold colours, which the is Del quite, quite are, the, the beautiful, aren't they? The full range yeah. of the colour range of the Delbeat Peach Rubens. They were like, I actually looked initially at stocking them. And then when I saw the number of colours, I, I could just see the pound size and stock sat in the back of my thought. But they're beautiful. They're absolutely mm -hmm. a cracking piece of cake. We also stocked the Clementi Peach Rubens, the Woodfire Clementis. Mm -hmm. uh, which I've actually got a Clemente at home. I've had a Clemente big wood fire at my house for six, seven, eight years. Absolutely love it. Big piece of kit. Brilliant they are. And then when we got approached by the importer of Clementes, they approached us after seeing the showroom, said, would you be interested in stocking the Clementes? As well as the Gosnes. I jumped at the chance because I know they're a cracking piece of kit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely cracking for a wood fire piece. So you can't go wrong. I think as well, the colour point... This is going to sound quite sexist, so I won't say wife, but I'll say partner. Sometimes if you've got one person who's a particular enthusiast on outdoor cooking and things, you need another way of convincing the partner why you need these. And yeah. the colour choices and the artistic piece, it helps a lot. You know, that 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 yeah. from an enthusiast, I'm very thankful that these companies are doing that. Because instead of saying to your partner or your wife, oh, I really want a pizza oven. What do you think of this? You go, right, which colour? <laughs> It yes. takes the no away straight away, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. If you take, if you bring, if you bring the other half in and you show them and and the the, the, the beautiful and, the, the, and sometimes crazy colours, mm. that's that's the deal. You, yeah. you know, you, you're not arguing with the other half. You you take them home. <laughs> so, what are you finding? I suppose is the most common questions or or advice that you're needing to give to uh, people when they come in the showroom, perhaps beginners and enthusiasts alike i think the most questions we get asked if i'm honest about it is about the pellet grills about the traegers that we stock uh what is a pellet grill what are these how do they work look at the size of the new traegers especially like you said before Dan. they're absolutely massive they catch your eye and customers they're like what is this it's a pellet uh, grill what's that and that's the most common question we get asked of, of anybody in the shop mainly the novices because obviously the barbecue uh guys know what they are but a general barbecue a general guy coming through the door for a, a, a barbecue that they've never heard of pellet grills and you have to explain the the, the concept you know and and are you finding that those um beginners or novices that are coming into into the showroom are there uh, 
I suppose, are their buying habits changing in that we've spoken to lots of people on this podcast before? And, you know, we always ask about what barbecue did they first get or where did they start? And there's a lot of people that start on gas. Yes. You know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, they started on gas. Then they moved to charcoal. Some jumped straight into a an offset, which is crazy to me to start with yeah. an offset. But yeah. Did, are you finding that new, you know, new people into barbecue are becoming more adventurous and don't just come into your showman and go, I want to learn to barbecue, give me a gas one? I'm not sure, you know. I'm not sure. I think the older generation of people coming through the door are pretty much gas orientated. It's more the younger side of people who are more adventurous. I mean, when we've explained about the pellet grills to somebody coming through the door, they're like, oh, no, no, just, just have you got a gas barbecue? And, you know, I can switch it on and away they go in 15, 10, 5, 10, 15 minutes. But definitely the younger side. But it's also surprising where we had, we had a couple in this morning who had come in for a built-in gas barbecue for an outside kitchen or building. Uh, and the guy was pretty jammed up. He knew what he was talking about. And he, he had his eye uh, on, a, on a ceramic egg. So people do have an understanding more for ceramic eggs. If you'd have asked somebody three, four, five years ago about a ceramic egg, they wouldn't have had a clue what you were talking about. They thought you were mm-hmm. talking about Easter eggs. Uh, <laughs> but there's, there's more and more people now who, right, I'm going to get a barbecue, let's research it, and then, oh, there's so much choice out there, like you said, gas, charcoal, pellets. The pizza ovens are so popular, like you said. Pizza ovens are, are, the, are the new uh, fashion. Uh, but right, so, there's social... They're a social animal. People love pizza parties. Uh, I can't fault them. I've got two pizza ovens. I love them. I'm rubbish at making pizzas. If I, <laughs> if I mention pizza night to my wife, to my Natalie, she hits the roof because she's thinking of the mess I'm going to make in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> she, she won't let me make them anymore. She makes them and I cook them, but she won't let me start preparing them and what have you because she knows I'm just going to have flour all over the kitchen. Hmm. yeah i'm i'm the same to be fair my wife does the make most of the the prep work um we had to move from flour we moved from flour to semolina because yes i, I was lit i just literally was covered in flour all the time yes yes yeah we we, we tried our piece tonight one night a week uh I, to be honest with you and maybe i shouldn't really say this since i brought took, took brought my rock box home mm. i i barely used my wood fired oven uh just for ease of use like i said with, with the dark nights when you're coming home you can switch, switch your gas rock box on and it's up and running in 20 minutes half an hour um my, my comment has been a little bit neglected but as soon as the night the light nights come it'll be getting hammered cooking the, the, the chicken in it and the and the raw some of you not just the pieces yeah so you've mentioned a couple of times, obviously, you've got two pizza ovens. Tell us about your <laughs> your, full, your full arsenal at home. What, what have you got? Oh, don't really have to do. So like I'm a, a spoiled brat. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a, a Napoleon built-in gas head unit. I've got uh, a Primo XL400 ceramic. Love the Primos. They're, they're, a, they're a weapon. They're brilliant, the Primos. So I've got the Primo egg. Uh, which I replaced my big green egg with. I took out the big green egg and put the Primo 400 in when we started stocking them. Didn't look quite right on the social media, stocking the Primos about having a green egg at home. So, yeah. but, but the oval uh, shape of the Primo is just so versatile with your indirect and your direct. It's just so much easier. Love it. Mm-hmm. Use it all the time. I tend to use it a lot more. As a charcoal barbie these days, which I know Debs at Primo would absolutely put me through a, a, a rinse to be saying that. Uh, I've got one of the new Traegers. I've not got the XL. I've got the, the one just down from it, the new Timberline. I brought one of those, one of those home for myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a tool. Um, I've got my Somerset Asado. Uh, I've got my Clemente pizza oven and I've got my rock box. And I think that's it at the moment. Oh, and I've just thought, oh, oh dear me. 
<laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about my my, my new my new offset smoker that I uh, got last Friday as well. Completely forgot about it. How could I forget about that? A big offset smoker. <laughs> I was going to ask Especially you about your... it on the on the socials. I saw it. <laughs> yes, uh, I ordered it a while ago and put my name to it a while ago from uh, Danny at Midwest uh, Pits and Grills, and they're only in Bolton. They're only a few. They're only fifteen minutes away from where I am. I was, I, I was looking on the social media and I saw them and oh, they're pretty cool. And they might have looked at the contact us and when they were located, they're, they're 10 minutes up the road. So, very long story short, I got myself this uh, beautiful offset, all extras on it, insulated fireboxes, the big wheels, reversible stacks, got everything on it. So, I put that outside the shop. Uh, literally a couple of days ago. I'm going to leave it outside the shop for a couple of months as a bit of a feature, and then I will be bringing it home and using it uh, at my house. Give that a go. Never used one before, so it's going to be a learning curve and all that for a fact. Mm. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's a piece of kit. Where we, yeah, so we looked on the socials, and it, I mean, it looks heavy. It's a beast. But you, you know what, with the, with the big wheels on it, because obviously at night we, we move it every night and put it away safely. It's so mobile on those big wheels. There's no effort moving it, none at all. Oh, nice. If maybe if it had been on the little wheels, little casters, maybe it might have been a bit of a a, a strain. But on those big wheels, one handed, I can move it. Oh, oh wow, okay. That's yeah, it's a heavy lump. It's a big heavy lump. So it probably says more about your muscles than anything else. No, right? no. Throwing <laughs> 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 gas bottles around all day, I think. <laughs> so, are you? Oh, go on, Dan. I was say, obviously a huge barbecue enthusiast with everything you've got and also the fact that you have a shop. How did you originally get into barbecue? Uh, we, myself and my wife, we, we, we wanted an outside kitchen. Uh, so we had an outside kitchen built and it kind of spread from there. And we were in it all the time, and especially through COVID with the nice weather we had. Mm-hmm. We, were, we were eating outside and cooking outside five, six nights a week. Uh, yeah. we, I think we only used the, the kitchen in the house once a week for months and months and months. Uh, and that was only when we, we, we had a point said we need to use that kitchen in the house, you know what I mean? <laughs> but we were eating outside and, 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 and cooking six nights a week. Uh, and like I said, through COVID, you couldn't go out and you couldn't, you know, you couldn't socialise. So I was happy. I had the barbecues, I'd be outside bar and the TV and I was cooking away and I was, I was over the moon. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and it, it kind of progressed from there and even back then I, I had the idea about opening up a grill barbecue shop it, it worked in well with the bottle gas side mm-hmm. uh, you know but our, our first choice for the barbecues was the gas barbecues because obviously we want to sell a bottle of gas with the mm-hmm. barbecue or even give a bottle of gas as a little incentive as part of the sweetener on the deal yeah because you buy a bottle of gas and it's going to cost you 80 quid to buy one. So if you get on one of those free with the barbie, it's, it's a little bonus. So our first barbecue decision of uh, who we were going to stock was right. Who was stocking gas? And then we went, we went on from there. But I've, I've always been into cooking this. I'm not, I'm not a good barbecue. I've, I've got to be honest. I'm not, I'm not the best. I'm far from it. I'm, I'm not even a, a half decent barbecue, but I, I like having to go on. I'm keen as mustard. So uh, I keep trying. Uh, to be fair, so it's the same for us. <laughs> I think, the, the, but actually, that's the. It doesn't really matter, right? How good you are, as long as you're enjoying yourself, uh, and and you know you're not uh, poisoning yourself, then job done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Or poison anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. It's uh, addictive, depends. isn't it? It's addictive. The the, the the I mean, it's addictive collecting barbecues, but it's addictive cooking on them. I think you know, and the whole the whole. The whole uh, aspect of it and community of it, I love it. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, you must have some willpower in the sense that you go into a barbecue shop and you every single day, and you see all these amazing things, and you get to obviously talk about new barbecues and stockists. I don't know how you haven't got more than what you already got. To be uh, to be fair, that's called the lady wife, Natalie. That's why I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I went on a a, a Borniac. Uh, smokers training day last weekend down at uh, Marcus's place. Uh, 
because mm-hmm. yeah. we're, we're now stocking the Borneat smokers, the Polish uh, cabinet type smokers, the electric smokers, which yeah. are very the Bradleys, you probably know them. And I went for a training down and down. I thought, oh, right, that's been it. I'm taking one of them home after the weekend. I'm, I'm going to have a Borneat smoker. And then I mentioned it to Natalie, and she just said, You're taking them the Mickey State. <laughs> Words <laughs> that effect. No, no. <laughs> So I'm working on that one. I'm working on that. <laughs> get get one for get one for uh, the showroom, and then be like, "Oh, we don't have space. We don't have space for this. Where are we going to put it? We're going to have to get home." <laughs> yeah, I know it's 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 a it's a perfect job. I absolutely love the job now. Going into work, it got to before I opened the barbecue shop. It was becoming a bit of a <sighs> going to work, and you know. Bit of a grind and a bit of a drag, but since we've opened the shop, I love it now, and I love when people come in looking for barbecues, and I love it when the barbecue guys come in, the barbecue lads, and they want to chat barbecues, talk about rubs. It's okay. absolutely how like, boring talking about rubs. I absolutely love it. What rub do you recommend for chicken steak? Sit down and listen. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We get loads of guys just coming in, even just little members of the public who have been in for other items, coming back to buy a couple of rubs. And we'll say, I'll say, what are you cooking? And they'll say, well, cooking a lamb. Okay. What do you recommend? A, B or C. It's great, honestly. Mm. If you've been looking or thinking about an outdoor kitchen, then look no further than AOS Outdoor Kitchens. They are the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists. Their extensive showroom is based just outside Bournemouth on the Dorset Hampshire border and as well as numerous in-store displays also features a live outdoor kitchen where they cook every week on Kamado grills, pizza ovens and all filmed and shown on YouTube. They offer a wealth of knowledge on how to transform your patio into the most incredible outdoor dining area with styles and options to suit every budget and you can guarantee they will be able to create something perfectly suited to you and your home. They stock and supply everything that you're going to need for outdoor cooking, including barbecues, Kamado ovens, pizza ovens, outdoor fridges, and every accessory that you would need to become the ultimate outdoor chef. So if you want to make yourself the envy of your friends and neighbours, get in touch with them today to arrange a consultation and take the first step in transforming your back garden into the most incredible entertainment space. Visit aoskitchens.co.uk. Well, even in that, it is addictive just chatting about it. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, here we are, what, 60 episodes later talking to you, and we had the same idea. Oh, wouldn't it be fun just to have a little chat with people about barbecue? Yeah. I, I have to reel myself in sometimes, honestly, because I can, I, can, I can go on all day about it. And like Natalie actually said to me last week, he said, sometimes people have already said they have it in making their mind up and you're still talking about it. And I'm like, I know, but... <laughs> It's not me. They're interested. They're talking back to me. I'm not <laughs> so, yeah, I love it, honestly. Yeah. Just think you don't have to keep going on about it. They're already buying the rubber. They've already made a decision. So, yeah, but we're having a, having a crack about it. We're having a chat about it. You know, I'm not after just selling them, selling them a rope. We're having a crack about cooking them and using the rope. Yeah. So, I think it works well. People yeah, come absolutely. back for it. People will come back yeah. for that sort of service as well because people – Yes, they want to buy the product, but they want to buy from people who understand, know, and care. I can also point them in the right direction if they want other bits of advice in the future. They're much more yes. likely to come back and buy like more bits from you than if they just came in, took something off the shelf, and paid for it, and no one said anything at all. Yes, I totally, totally agree. Mm. Yes, we, we we like that interaction. We, we love the interaction. I mean. Um, the, the rubs and that, you, you don't make any money out of it. We're not allowed to make money out of it. You, you make pennies on, on the rubs and the sauces. But it's good to have because people come in and you can have the crack with them then, you know, on the chat barbecues. We get people coming in all the time just, just to come in and have a little chat about the barbies uh, and, what, and what they're cooking this weekend. What are you cooking this weekend? Someone will come in for a roll of uh, butcher's paper and they'll be like, what, what are you cooking this weekend? And I'm cooking, oh, yeah, what are you cooking, Steve? You're having a little chat about it. You know, and they've only popped in to spend a couple of quid, but you both they got away. Then you both had a little chat about your barbecue, and it's good. It's brilliant, love it. Yeah, and again, it's just the community aspect, isn't it? Um, which is it's so important. Um, yes, I, I actually just want to kind of go back a couple of couple of yes. minutes to where you were saying about you know you've got all these barbecues, but you don't think you're necessarily the best cook. Um, 
one, one of the things that we hold dear on the podcast is our barbecue fails you know some of the some of the cooks that haven't gone so well um have you got any stories for us of uh, any barbecue fails uh, i've got to say one word brisket <laughs> <laughs> i think do do tell oh just it's, it's my nemesis cooking the brisket that I've only ever cooked two decent and finished on time briskets, and that's been the past two over the past couple of months. But for the previous eight, nine months, every brisket I've cooked, it's not so much turned out too badly. It's just that my timing is terrible. It'll be ready at midnight on a Sunday when I'm supposed to be on it for four o'clock tea time Sunday. And you, it's can't, become... you can't guess a stall. You cannot guess oh, a stall. I'm terrible on it, honestly. Um, I'll say to Natalie, I'm cooking up. I've just had a big brisket actually delivered yesterday from, uh, was it Tom Hicksford? It was, is it John Davidson, online butcher? Yeah. What are yeah. The... Yeah. yeah. We got a discount code. There's a discount code flying around. And I thought, all right, I'll treat myself to an American uh, uh, high-end brisket with it because it had a discount code. So Natalie, I come to the shop, rang Natalie, I said, Natalie, come to the shop, this brisket up has been, just been delivered. Get it in the freezer. She's like, you've not bought another brisket, have you? She said, you're not cooking that. <laughs> It'll be ready midnight Sunday. Bloody you cooking brisket. It's, it's, I might as well just not have any tea. And, oh. Yeah, so briskets are my arch enemy because the timing, I can never, ever get it right. <laughs> uh, but surprisingly, well, the, the past two times I've got it right is it only because I've done an overnight cook. And that is the only reason that I've actually had my tea at tea time on a Sunday. <laughs> because of that. If I'd have done the four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning, got up and had on all three Sunday, no, no, like I said, it hits the stall. I'm rushing it. It tastes like bloody, don't know what, rock hard. And it's early hours in the morning. I give up and go to bed and just put it in the fridge the day after. So, yeah, brisket, hate it, but overnight is the future. Um, I hate to say it, it might be swear word, but I've done the past two on my new Traeger, and it was actually the best brisket I've ever done. And it was actually awesome. I was funny enough, I was going to ask what you, what you were cooking it on. What, what temperature are you cooking the brisket on? Uh, I did it a little tiny bit lower these past two times because it was an overnight and because, <laughs> because I didn't want to, get, want to get out of my bed at half six, seven in the morning to wrap it or do what I had to do before. <laughs> what I do is I put it on about 11 o'clock at night and I was trying to plan it in my head because this is how bad I am at time. And I put it on 11 o'clock at night. If I put it on at 95 instead of 105, 110, I'd get an extra couple of hours sleep in the morning. <laughs> and that's so about 95 100 because it was trying to get a lie in but 100, 110 generally overnight and it, the last one i did i did for i think 11 hours wrapped it i did it for another three hours and then i let it rest in the cool box and i put loads of blankets in and towels and really filled the void up in the cool box this time because yeah. i've been you know yeah you know the crack and uh it was actually beautiful it was awesome, uh, and a vacuum sealed up because Natalie hardly eats anything. I'm a greedy, I'm a greedy sort, but Natalie barely touches the food. So I had three quarters of the brisket left. So I sliced it and vacuum sealed it and, and filed it away in the oh, freezer. There's so much good stuff you can do with it. I, I'm, I yeah. love leftovers from barbecue. But Owen and I yeah. were saying, like, even when you freeze it. There's something about smoke that when you open it up in the future day, it's so yes. much more powerful. Yes. And it, it, yes. it's like magic if you add it to like bolognese, if you add it to like chili, anything, it just lifts and elevates so much food. She made that, the wife made with that brisket, the last one we did, the following uh, day, she made a brisket cottage pie, I think it was. Mm. And that's exactly what you said. Mm. It tasted better than the brisket the day before. Mm -hmm. Like you said, when you vacuum seal it up, it, 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 it must keep the smoke in, and it just seems to make it more more powerful, more 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 super strong. Yeah, I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. One thing I, I'm uh, really into at the minute, <clears throat> myself and Dan went down to Sizzle Fest last year. Oh, I went down. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, we might have missed you. Well, we've been both years. We're going down again in September. So if you're yeah. there, we'll, we'll, I'll we'll see say hello yeah. in person. Yeah. Um, do you, one of the vendors there last year was uh, selling Feather Blade burgers. <sighs> I had one. Oh, oh that it, was, was, it was a mind The blowing. best beef. Oh, God. Oh, wasn't it the best thing you've ever had? Yeah. I, I don't know what they did to it. I do not know what they did to it. They might have even sprinkled like crack in it. I don't know what it was, yeah, but it was possibly, so yeah. good. <laughs> I've now I, I, fallen in love with Feather Blade. Oh, I, I, honestly, yeah. But I went down with a friend of mine who was working with us at the time. And uh, I said to him, you come down and I'll, I'll cover costs of everything and all the lot so i said let's get one of these uh feather blade burgers it was uh oh, i can't think of the name of it the gentleman of the company now it was by the uh the big the axe uh, throwing was it behind it. behind the axe throwing by the uh mechanical bull yeah it, they, were, they were next to the iron brand uh it's for iron brand smoke because they were next to him and yeah. i paid for the burgers <laughs> and then i went Flaming Nora, but I didn't use them words. I went, Flaming Nora, 24 quid for two of them, 12 quid a piece. And I took a bite and I'm going, 20. I took one bite and I went, worth every penny. That was the, oh, that was, I was was actually just going to start calling it. But I took a bite and I said, damn, that is good. That's well worth 12 quid. I'd have given 20 pounds for that. (laughs) I, I, yeah, we, we, we were so impressed that. I've, I've, I, it's now my go-to. Yes. I haven't, I've cooked one brisket so far this year, but I've cooked two feather blades. Actually, I cooked one at the weekend um, uh, in the Traeger. Um, and I think it's so much more cost-effective uh, in, 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 you know, cost per kilo or whatever. Yeah. My, my local butcher is, is charging me the same for a piece of feather blade as what he does for um, brazen steak. So it's super cheap. I've never cooked one. I've never, never, never. Wow. They're worth. They're worth it. I, I, I think, I think you should give it a go if you're struggling with brisket, yeah. but you want to have that brisket taste. But a, you don't want to spend sixty, seventy quid on a, a British, um, yeah, brisket, or even more. We're talking into the hundreds, you know, yeah. for for yeah. A, for a USDA prime one. I, I honestly try and get a piece of feather blade. It's do half, it. half a third the cost, but I think you get just as good results. Yes, that's definitely. Well, when I, when we finish tonight, I'm going to be jumping on the iPad and sourcing a, a feather blade. I'll oh, have to yeah. get get on the messages to the two butchers that we deal with online butchers and uh, have a chat to them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. Anyway, uh, it's digressing mm. there. I, I'm just falling in love with it. <laughs> I, I, I've gone into dreamland. I'm just remembering. Like it wasn't just it wasn't just how they'd cooked it. It was how they paired it up with like the pickles and stuff they'd put in there with yes. the bun they'd served it in it, it it was like a piece of art it was phenomenal and this is what we say this is why people should go to these shows because you don't experience that type of food unless you go to these places where there's masters at work frankly yes yeah totally so i went there to sizzle fest it's the very it's the first barbecue show i've, I've been to uh and i'll be going again this year it's a bit of a, a bit of a drive for us Bit of a trek, uh, but I'll definitely go down again. When we went down, we saw a lot of faces that we've been having banter with on Instagram, uh, Skinny Boy and uh, Smithy Smoke Shack, and we've been having bits of banter online and going down to actually see them and shake them and have a beer with them. It was brilliant, so I'm definitely going to make the trip again this year, see some yeah. of the lads. Up. Yeah. Well, we de- we'll, we'll definitely meet you there. Yeah, cool. um, at the shop, are you either at the moment or perhaps you're looking to to plan for this season kind of starting to you know bring into like demos and perhaps little kind of events and things like that with, with the shop is that in in the pipeline for you yes most definitely we've already done a couple of open days we did the, the, the actual day we opened we did an open day and then we did a little christmas type market open day on i think it was the second of december uh they both went really well the, the initial opening day was crazy it was mental busy we, we did put a free bar on so I think that helped things a little bit I think that's review people <laughs> cool. can, I, can I go back yeah um. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we did the Christmas one which was busy but yes going forward uh, we've got big plans to do different cook open days uh, it's just staffing with myself at the moment with Abby going on maternity um, just staffing them at the moment 
but we have spoken to Gosney and we've spoken to Debs from Primo came up on the Christmas one and so they attended. But we've spoken to Tom at Traeger and uh, Jack at Gosney and a few of the guys and they're going to send up maybe demo chefs and give us, give us a pair of hands. That's the only thing holding us back. We have got a little bit of room in front of the shop, you see, where you could we, we could quite easily get crikey five gazebos and ten barbers and it's right on the A6 main row position it's a prime spot for passing traffic yeah. Uh, so, yeah most definitely we are uh, we've got a lot of demo units and we've used and we're going to use again it's just literally the manning of them for me and, and, and the manpower is something I need to get uh, get my bum in gear about really and get, get, get lined up Oh, fantastic. And what what else have you got planned for 2023? Any secrets you can tell us? Um, We've got a few few more bits due in in the shop. Uh, We're waiting on the Blackstone Griddles. We've got the Blackstone Griddles coming in, which are going to be all the rage. I think that's the latest uh, must-have, latest latest fad. I'm I'm, I'm having one. I know I'm taking one home. That's for sure. (laughs) Everyone's out of stock at the moment, aren't they? You can't. They've not. They've not landed in the country yet. Uh, they've been put back another month. I think there's. Uh, I don't think they've quite got the UK certification just finalised off yet. But it's only a matter of a couple of weeks. They were supposed to be here last month, this month, and we're getting so next month. But we're really excited for that because apparently, as you know yourself, in America and in the states, they're massive. They do more units than Traeger or anybody. They sell millions of them. Massive in America. So we're looking forward to getting the range in. Um, we've got uh, our boxes of wood. Uh, smoky wood being delivered tomorrow. We've been lining up uh, wood. So we're going to get the wood splits and the wood chunks in the big boxes and hardwood kindling for the pizza ovens. Uh, so that's another little line we started. We've just got all the books in. We've got all Marcus's new books in. and um, We've got a few other lines we're bringing in. We're looking at, we had a meeting last night, we're looking to move into maybe doing the outside kitchens, uh, the modular units that, there's a few out there that do them, Whistler, Bull, Beef Eater. Uh, There's a few, you know the kind, the modular units that you can buy and you just, we're looking at doing those. We had a meeting last night with one of the suppliers about getting one in the showroom and doing them. Uh, I'm I'm hoping, I think I'm going to expand the PK Grills range. We've got the PK 360 in, but I've had a little message today with our suppliers saying I'm looking to get the PK going and uh, the PK 300. Because the PK Grills, they may be a little bit expensive for the general public walking in off the street for a charcoal barber, but you pay for what you get. They've been around for 70 years. They tried and tested. They're a bit like the Hellraisers, they're a bit like tanks that are, that are cast aluminium box they're not going rusty, they're not breaking. <laughs> but when Joe Public is going to walk in off the streets, not a barbecue enthusiast, but just a man looking for a barber, he comes in and, and you're looking at a PK 360 at seven, eight, nine hundred pounds. He's like, I go to BQ for 99 quid, I go to BQ mm. for 199. But that's going to last you two, three years, <laughs> BQ barbing like that, of that quality. If I say, you buy PK grills and they're going to last you. It's going to last your lifetime, virtually. So we're going to expand the PK range. Um, there's a, a couple of other lines we're going to expand and what have you. Yeah, so we've, we've got plans. So the, the only thing that's holding us back is the space in the shop. We, we're full. We're absolutely chocker. I've actually got tomorrow a couple of uh, friends, builders coming in. And in my showroom, they're knocking the doorway through the back of it and in my storeroom behind and my offices behind that aren't really open to the general public, I pinched some space and we're building another room and we're going to get some of the stuff in the shop, primarily all the charcoals and smoking woods and put it in there to free a bit of room up. Yeah. If, if we had unlimited resources of money, I'd be putting a mezzanine floor in. But mm-hmm. who's got that kind of money hanging around at this yeah. present climate? Yeah, yeah. We've got room for a mezzanine floor because we'd be in an old church building <coughs> where the suspended ceiling is now. Above that is another full floor. 
Wow. So there is the there is the room and the, the angle is just closing the shop for a month to do it and finding 50 grand or 100 grand to do it. I thought, that's not going to happen this year. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least there's something that you can do for the future and plan for, right? This is, yeah. Let's see how this season goes. And uh, you never know, touch wood next year. I'd love, I'd love another floor to fill with barbecues because I'm thinking that for every barbecue I bring in, I can bring one home and I can have more <laughs> in the collection. <laughs> yeah. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I think, uh, I think it would be a good time to go on to our barbecue bingo challenge. Barbecue Bingo is brought to you by Lumberjack Food Company. Your ticket to Flavortown. Hopefully, you can see this uh, list of ingredients on our high-tech spinning wheel. Yes. So, the one that says "my signature dish" is what would be your signature dish. What are you best known for? Uh, my lamb roast. I'm, I'm quite good at doing the lamb roast and on the rotisserie. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at those, and I and enjoy doing those. And they actually taste pretty good for me. Awesome. So if it lands on that, that that would be uh, that would be your your thing. Um, we we mentioned to you before we kicked off. If you can have an ingredient ready to put back onto the wheel for the for the next guest, that would be amazing. Um, but let's give it a spin and see what you get. <laughs> liver. <laughs> oh yeah, I feel really bad for you because I would not want to do that. <laughs> no. I, I know what I would do off the bat. Off Throw the it away. Bat. No, no, no. I would, I would do. Um, I'd put it in a pie and do some baking on the barbecue. Yes. <laughs> You know, if you can have a steak and kidney pie, surely you can do something with liver in a pie. And you and then you've got the pastry and stuff as well to kind of take on, cover up some of the flavour if you're not confident with it, you know. <laughs> Actually, didn't you say right at the beginning of the podcast that uh, because everyone was guessing the grills, if you were going to, you know, do your hoover or whatever and tell us the brand, you were going to give them your kidney or liver anyway. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just That's cook it funny. first. <laughs> Right, so I've got to, I've got to make a liver dish. Have I? I've got a barbecue liver dish. Is that what we're saying? Of yeah, sauce. well, as, as liver can, is one of the ingredients. So if you really right. wanted to, you could do a pizza, and then Oof, put tiny no. bits of liver on it if you wanted to. <laughs> I'm sure we, can, I'm sure we can, we can manage that, can't we? It's, it's been a while since we've had what feels like one of the stitch up uh, items come up. So. That's going to hurt. Are you going to leave something to stitch people up? Or are you going to be kind? Oh, that's, that's what I'm thinking this very second. What can I watch the worst possible thing in the world I could leave by it? Uh, oh, damn. All the best ones have been picked, haven't they? Oh, let's have a little look. I mean, some of the things oh. you've got on there is like octopus, uh, monkfish, beef tongue, artichoke, duck. Uh, Paella, Szechuan Paella. pepper. We've had strawberries on there before. Can be anything. Chocolate. Yeah, we've had chocolate buttons. We've had pineapple. We've had mangoes. Oh no, they're on there already. Uh, chicken hearts. Oh, awful to awful. Yeah, chicken hearts. I think we've not got I've it never, on her, have we? No. Yeah, no, chicken no. hearts. I've never had chicken a, hearts. Not everybody's cup of tea. They're, they're quite the in thing at the moment, though. I, a few of the shows that we've been to, people have done things with chicken hearts on the skewers. Yeah, no, that's exactly what I've seen them at the, the old mm. kind of Brem Brazil, Fenzenda type places mm -hmm. on the skewers. But chicken hearts, I think it's not a bad one for somebody. That I think it's just doable. It sounds like you take them over liver, right? Uh, yes, yeah, <laughs> more than definitely. <laughs> <laughs> You won't, talk, you won't talk to us again now. Oh, these guys stitch me up with liver. Oh, I'm going to block you. I'm going to block you. <laughs> is there, we always ask, uh, is, is there anything else that we've uh, that you'd like to talk about that we haven't brought up yet or that you wanted to, to mention about barbecue or just well, anything in general, really? Um, do you guys know about the festival in Preston? In, uh, there's a barbecue festival in Preston. 
mean, that needs a bit of a ring, a bit of a publicity, really. The Barbecue Up North Festival. Yes, it's the Flame and Food Festival. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, I mean, when, when, when we went down to the training, the uh, uh, Marcus's place for the Borneo Smokers last weekend, there were, there were a number of people that and, and nobody had really heard about it. So I think it, I think it needs a bit of pushing for the barbecue community so people, you know, because all the festivals, as you know, they all seem to be down south. And I know oh. there's, there's a lot of, Owen and I have been saying, I, we don't know what it is about Hampshire yeah. and Dorset, but yes. everything seems to be down there. Everything. I didn't want to say and sound like I was being uh, segregational, for lack of a better term, but all the barbecue festivals are all down south and they're a trek for us lads up, up, up here in the north mm-hmm. and for the guys in Scotland and Preston. It's a four or five hour trip each way. It's a mm-hmm. mission. We need more, not, even the Midlands will be cool. Even something around the Midlands or Birmingham would be doable for all of us. But there's this show in Preston. It's a two-day two day, uh, festival in Preston in May. Um, should be good. There's all sorts on. Uh, should be. Well, it's, it's, tickets are cheap. Family tickets only about 35 quid for a family of four. They're not, they're not subbing prices for the tickets. If, uh, <laughs> <you know. laughs> I think it's only £20 a ticket to get in and 35 for family. And, some of the big names are there. Gos- Gosney's going to be there uh, with us because we're going up. So Gosney's going to be there. Uh, Borniac Smoke is going to be there. Weber's one of the main sponsors. Uh, we're going up. There's, there's, all sorts, there's, there's all sorts going on there. Should be, should be a good weekend. And uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's the first barbecue festival up in the north of the country. Hopefully they're going to do one every year. They're looking at the guys. Brilliant. Great stuff. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, Steve, and obviously congratulations on launching your barbecue showroom and your business. And obviously, I hope we hope you know a to meet you in person this year, but also for you to have a fantastic season and many to come. Thank you very much, guys. It's been a pleasure. Great to meet you both. We're going to have a good season this year, all of us. The barbecue and the sun's going to be out, and we're all going to be outside cooking on our on our different barbecues mm-hmm. and grills. And uh, I'll see you guys then at Sizzle Fest, but I'll see you before. Yeah. Yes. We'll so see before you. you go, just tell us, tell people where they can find you. What's your website, Instagram, etc. Uh, Alfresco Chapel. We're in uh, Chorley in Lancashire. Our website is alfrescochapel.co.uk. Uh, on Instagram, I think we're alfresco underscore chapel. You'll soon find us. Uh, we're pretty keen on there. Uh, the shop's awesome. The showroom's brilliant. Come and have a look. Come and look at the barbecues. Get hands on, have a play with them. You don't need to buy anything, but come on, let's talk rubs and sauces. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for your time, Steve. All right, guys. Lovely to speak to you. Cheers. Cheers, Steve. Thank you. Cheers, night, fellas. Bye bye. Bye. That's it for another episode of the Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast. Thanks so much to Steve at Alfresco Chapel talking to us about his new venture, his new business. It's been open for, for a year. Please, if you're if you're in the the northwest, go go visit his showroom. Um, as ever, we want to hear from you. Please get in contact through the usual channels at Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, our website, Meet and Greet Barbecue Podcast dot com. Um, until next time, keep on grilling. Today's episode is brought to you by AOS Kitchens, the South's leading outdoor kitchen design and installation specialists.